It's being pushed by celebrities who have decided that mainstream fake news media needs a little help. Actress Mariska Hargitay tweeted, who I, by the way, never heard of, uh, because a free press has never been more important. I subscribe today to The New Yorker, Teen Vogue, National Geographic Kids, The Washington Post, and Time Magazine. Hashtag press on, but you know she'll never read them. She'll get all of her information from news media that is on the internet, and that's precisely why all of those outlets are going by the wayside, because they are old media. Ben Stiller pushed the outlet ProPublica with his tweet that said, we all need to accept the same truths, facts are facts, subscribe to a real journalism outlet, tweet your receipt, press on. Of course, these celebrities are pushing all outwardly anti-Trump publications, and it seems like those are the ones that are failing. Here to discuss the one, oh, who is one, someone who's one of the real news media outlets, not mentioned by the celebrities from big league politics, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer, good to see you. Hi, Dr. Gina, how are you? Doing fine, thanks, Jennifer. Now, do these celebrities realize that most people in middle America become immediately skeptical of anything they support? It didn't work in the presidential election. Obviously, Trump was elected. It hasn't worked since then. People view them as elite, even though they want to be entertained by the movies. They really just want them to shut up and perform, right? Absolutely. I don't even think that the, the you know, the L.A. actor types even know that middle, middle America exists, you know, that it's just the place they fly over when they go to New York or L.A. They are completely out of touch with the everyday people. And that's why they make stupid PR stunts like this one where they're creating a hashtag to try to sell subscriptions to failing news agencies. And these news agencies used to be, you know, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, the go to. But now, because of what they, Trump exposed during the election, that they lie, they outwardly lie, they say what they want to say, and it doesn't matter whether their journalistic integrity is intact anymore. As long as they are doing what the liberals want them to do, they're, they're okay in their book, and they get to keep their paycheck. But do they realize things like that even if people subscribe because they were told to by some Hollywood celebrity, they're still, they're, first of all, they're just going to spend their money on some stupid magazine that they're not going to read anyway instead of going to one of their movies because most mm -hmm. people at that level that were, are stupid enough to be sheeple and do what Hollywood actors tell them to do are on very limited budgets, right? Let's just get that out of the way. They're usually uh, probably recruited at, uh, by Starbucks or someone like that, some other lefty organization. Um, and so ultimately, they're going to be stumbling across news outlets like yours who are being given a voice by this administration. We all saw Trump's brand new uh, press from the White House and they have Skypers there from all over the country. So they can't win this fight at this point. No, they can't because the American people realize that just because it's a, you know, Katie Couric or Dan Rather, or big name in journalism doesn't mean they have integrity. And it doesn't mean that they're getting the real story out. And it, it doesn't mean that they're telling the truth. And I think that people are after the truth because of the way the country's going right now. We have so many people come up to us and that I've met all across the country who say, thank you so much for not misquoting me or thank you so much for, you know, going there and telling the real story. So many times I've been at, at events across the country and the, you know, the news agencies I see there everywhere I go are the daily press out of the UK and Infowars. And you know, Infowars has a rap, but I seen their journalists there on the ground at these events. And when I go and I walk towards the press pen, all the other journalists are putting their little pens and they're they're rubbing their elbows and aren't I cool? Aren't I in the press pen? They're not getting the real story. They're they're getting the story that is being fed to them by the people who love the media, who want to be on the media. They're not going and seeing the real story. And I witnessed it at the DNC, the RNC, and all these other places where there were protests and mm -hmm. you know I was in the protests I was dressed as a protester and, and covering it and then I'd walk down the street and there would be NBC MSNBC and all of their journalists standing behind police barricades like scared you know you're a journalist get out there and get the story that's your job and if you don't want to do that then become a talking head but don't consider yourself a journalist Right. It, it is so interesting because we really are in a, a post-Trump era and the rules are completely changed. And it's like the Democrats and the media and Hollywood can't wrap their tiny little brains around it and understand <laughs> that, the, that the playbook has changed, hasn't it? 
it, it, it's absolutely changed. You know, when when he's doing his press corps and he's leaving four open seats for Skype journalists to come in and be able to be a part of the press corps, you know, that's an amazing thing. He's bringing younger journalists in. He's bringing people who were, you know, blackballed by the regular media, who are good journalists, who go out and get the good story, but because they didn't subscribe to the liberal doctrination that were that was going on, you know, they were they were blackballed. And Mr. Trump has really done a service to everyday Americans, everyday journalists. And I'm so happy that um, journalism in America is coming back and it's getting its integrity back that it deserves. There's some other dueling hashtags out there on social media today. Boycott Starbucks is trending today, along with Delete Uber, in response to President Trump's temporary pause on immigration from seven countries identified as terrorist hotspots. Uh, Starbucks announced Starbucks announced they would hire refugees in Starbucks locations around the U.S. and worldwide. And in response to that, boycott Starbucks shot to the top of the trends on social media. Then on the other side is Uber. Uber kept driving people to JFK Airport, even though the leftist New York taxi cab unions declined to drive anyone there in solidarity with the anti-Trump protesters. So leftists on social media started the hashtag delete Uber. Some subscribed to Lyft because they were going to give a million dollars to the ACLU. Um, this is just, it's like everybody who has a job and doesn't want to do their job, they all want to dabble in politics. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is that everybody thinks they're a politician. Everybody thinks they're an activist now. And, you know, Starbucks hiring refugees is just unbelievable to me. You know, why would I want somebody serving me my coffee who was just banned for temporarily? You know, like, I don't see how that's going to end well for anybody. Yeah, not you know, to mention but, it's totally discriminatory and against the law because you can't hire someone based on, hello, national origin. We exactly. all know that, right? Exactly. So, I mean, where where are these people getting off? These CEOs, these these people are overstepping their bounds and they need to be put in place. They own companies. They aren't running the country. They aren't running people's lives. And it's it, and people are free to use Uber. If they want to use Uber, they should be allowed to use Uber. You, you know, private companies have the right to refusal and that's fine. But you shouldn't start by hashtag this, hashtag that. And I think by uh, them using hashtags shows what little power they actually have that they're not allowed, they can't go out and reach the people like they traditionally do. They have to do it through hashtags and to, you know, brainwash people into thinking they shouldn't use these companies. And I mean, for Starbucks, I, I think we all should boycott Starbucks, but that's, that's Yeah, funny. and if they're really so concerned about refugees, donate five bucks to a refugee camp or to women being brutalized by radical Islam or something like that rather than your overpriced yeah. bitter coffee, pretty much, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I, uh, I, Twitter is an amazing thing, but I don't think that it's being used properly. You know, it's being used by the left by, as a tool and it, it's trying to change the minds and people. And, you know, we need honest people out there. You know, when Twitter silences people like Milo and Chuck Johnson, you might not agree with what they're saying, but they have a right to say what they're saying. This is America. Yeah, and, and yet they're really? attacking Trump, saying he's trying to silence the media. Oh, they're so confused. All right, Jennifer, thank you so much. Catch her work at BigLeaguePolitics.com. And up next, Reagan Baby here with Rapid Fire Rounds. Stay put.